Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. I'm just going to throw out a, a take that I, I thought was sort of bold, and now it seems to be sort of consensus, is Atlanta Hawks have the number one pick. And we've been told, and I'm going to rely on you, you're the draft analyst, you know more about these guys than anybody, but we've been told there's no guaranteed, no doubt about it, superstar, oh. can't miss guy. And so from my perspective, watching the NBA, and I'm a casual fan, I, you know, I'm, my, my, my bread is buttered with college, but I see Jokic in Denver. I see the Timberwolves with two centers. I think Donovan Klingon should be the first pick in the draft. And, and and especially by the way, you don't know if you're really keeping Trey young. Are you, are you building around? It's like, it's a, it, we had the moment in time where we had the, the, the small ball and then everybody realized there's only one Steph Curry and one Clay Thompson. So you're not going to be better at that than them. And they're getting older and we're moving out of that. So that's a long winded way of me saying Donovan Klingon, the way that he dominated the paint, really his entire career, but certainly those final few games, of the NCAA tournament, it just opened my eyes that if there's no Wemby, if there's no whoever you deem to be can't miss, that's the guy that I would take number one overall. But I don't, again, I don't know if it's my UConn bias, my my college basketball bias. I've seen him obviously more than a lot of the international guys. So curious for your perspective. Well, first of all, I have a good NBA friend who says, um, I love Alex Sar at 11. Oh. And that's the draft. That's this yeah. draft. Mm -hmm. This draft is that way. I mean, there's no consensus. And you know, like I remember 2000, I know it's been brought up, but uh, I was in, intimately involved in the 2013 draft for ESPN with the international guys. And that was Anthony Bennett at one and then Giannis at 15 and Rudy at 28, you know, and I remember seeing both of those guys before, the, you know, in June that year in Italy. And so I'm with you on Klingon. I think it's going to be Risa Shea okay. in Atlanta, okay? And uh, that's my pick right now as a week before the draft but i but i like clinging better than sar because sar to me you're just hoping that he becomes that mobile freaky seven foot two can guard five positions catch lobs shoot threes whereas with clinging and remember this about quinn snyder who did he coach into all-star and all defensive status in utah rudy gobert right that's right seven foot two you know, there are some similarities. What I love about Donovan Klingon is he played in an offense this year where all five guys handle the ball. They played through him in a high post, that new modern five-out offense with what we call, like, they call it Zoom offense, okay? I don't know why, but it's five-out with the big guy handling the ball at the top of the key. He's got size. He's a deceptively good athlete, um, runs pretty well. He's got toughness. He's 285. He probably needs to lose 15 pounds to be a little bit quicker. Um, I don't care about the three ball. That's not happening for five years. Okay. I know everybody says, well, I saw him do drills and he that's five years away, four years away. They'll work with him on that. I could see him going number one because, uh, and here's the last thing, you know, Bristol, Connecticut, Aaron, you know, you know, Bristol is hard scrabble, it is. New England chip on your shoulder. We're from nothing. And we're going to make something of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And he's always had that. And again, get back to, he was only a top 50 player. So this is all new to him. There's something to be, I don't think he's going to go past three. And I think that's an upset. I absolutely think it's possible. He could go one. I would take Reese to the French kid at six, nine. Cause I love the fact that he's got an NBA position and he's got a lot of skill and he only just turned 19, but I'm with you on clean. So it's very interesting. By the way, the thing that you said about Sar, you blew my mind one year. I saw you the year that Cam Johnson got drafted at like 12 or 13 or whatever. And I remember saying like, oh, that's that's kind of interesting or something like that. And I said, you know, nobody had him that high. And he said, and you told me, you're like, Aaron, there's 30 teams with 30 boards. Just because whoever, just because you didn't have him on your board at number 13 or 12 or wherever he got drafted doesn't mean that another team didn't value him that way. And so it's a fascinating way to look at the draft of just, you know, different guys have different values to different organizations, all that. For people who don't know much about the player you mentioned, Zachary Richichet, he's from France. 
Um, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Most of us have not seen a lot of these international. How about this? A lot of us haven't, I mean, I have, but a lot of fans haven't seen the American players much because a lot of them played for Ignite or Overtime Elite. But t- tell us about uh, Risa Shea and, and, and why, why you value him at number one. Well, you know, luckily for me, it's been 20 years now, but I not only loved basketball, as you said earlier when we got on here about me, I coached a Spanish kid at Manhattan. We went, we traveled to Spain and took him over, took him back home. I've done clinics overseas. And I've had this incredible fascination, as you know, with International Hoop. Mm-hmm. And the way I would describe it, if you give me 60 seconds, then we'll talk about Please. this kid. Don't worry about the dream team. We all talk about the dream team. Oh, I changed it. You know, Paul Gasol's 14. He decides he wants to be a basketball player. Dirk, he loved Larry Bird. No. In the 60s, and even Red Hour back in the 50s, go, I'm dating myself here, but I'm a history nut. Chuck Daly, Yubi Brown, uh, Dr. Jack, Lou Carnesecca, Dean Smith, they would be invited around the world in the summer to do clinics for federations, the Italian Basketball Federation. The State Department wanted you to go to Egypt and do a basketball clinic. You know, the American coaches of that era, and then later on, Bob McKillop and others, they taught the world basketball. And then, sure enough, Dream Team comes along, and that adds to it. And all of a sudden, now, today, 2024, the world teaches us basketball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Over mm-hmm. Trump, we got big guy. Where does big guys who play away from the basket came from? They came from the trapezoid lane where it wasn't didn't make sense to post up, you know? And all these guys like the Jokic's and the Gasol's. And so anyway, here's my point. The globe has shrunk. We we had there was a mystery to these guys 20 years ago. Now every NBA team is invested in international basketball, scouting and synergy and video and TV games and whatever. Here's the other thing about France, which is going to probably put five guys in this draft. Okay, if you look at and uh, and I'm you know I'm a I, I try to figure these things out. Immigration, you know, where are all the kids coming into the French Pro A League now? They're the children of immigrants from former French colonies in Africa. Giannis's story. I mean, it's Greece, but that's Giannis's story. Yeah, he story. went to Greece. That's right. It's, but his family was Nigerian. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You got Cameroonians and uh, from the Dem- Democratic Republic of Congo. And so you look at the French Pro A League and Pro B, and there's athletes everywhere. It's no longer these big six, eight white guys who smoke cigarettes after games. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. You know, the, the French pro league is the most athletic, athletic league in Europe. So anyway, Risa Shea played 70 pro games this year at 18. Wow. wow. At okay. 18, against guys that are former good college players, you know, high level college, good level French pro league players. In many cases, some former NBA players. And so kids like Risa Shea and Victor, and uh, Saloon, who's another kid's going to go in the first 15. And uh, 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 Pacom, that's his first name. Uh, Datier. I, I like that's pretty good. That's pretty, that was pretty good. I, yeah. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Um, these are all French kids who are athletic, skilled, well fundamentally coached players. And just watch an NBA game, and the rest is, you know, what I'm talking about. 